Last time I explained the general approach, including real structure, and explained that this approach can be extended to all problems, in fact, for geometric structures. But let, let me uh, concentrate on two, three, five distributions. This is our topic. So our first step is to choose a symbol. Uh, an important uh, approximation of symbol is the same thing, uh, and but uh, all symbols for two, three, five distributions, as you know, are the same. Uh, uh, it is a graded input and three out. But we need to choose it as a vector fields. So what we need to take two vector fields and one and two fields on R5 in local coordinates. Uh, which are such that n1 and n2 are homogeneous with respect to these natural waves, uh, which I explained last time, are quasi homogeneous. Uh, uh, they are two step bracket generated. These five vector fields are linearly in the question. A quasi homogeneous, oh, which uh, mis my mistake, I didn't write quasi homogeneous of degree minus one. It's very important what I. Sorry, I forgot to write. Quasi homogeneous of degree minus one. Back to this. So why minus one? It was uh, clearly, I hope, explained uh, last time. It's a very important uh, uh, minus one. So then the bracket has this quasi homogeneous of degree minus two, and n four and a five. All the brackets are quasi homogeneous of degree minus three. This is minus three. Is the minimal degree of quasi homogeneity this, this. Uh, so I explained last time it is related to Belaitius theorem that symbol and uh, such two vector fields quasi homogeneous of degree minus one and make it generative it is the same thing uh, so all pairs and one and two with these properties are diffeomorphic can be brought one to the other by a change of coordinate, even without change of vectors, just by a change of coordinate. So, but of course, we can choose this or that uh, and vector fields and one and, and two. Conceptually, this choice is irrelevant. But nevertheless, uh, in my talk, I will pronounce from time to time the words good and bad, or good and not good. And uh, sometimes I will give precise definitions what is good and what is not good. Sometimes mm, not precise definition, but just uh, then good will be convenient, at least convenient for me. Here are two examples. So most people like this example, n, when uh, uh, this and one and then two. So these are uh, vector fields, the chapter. They are, Quasi homogeneous with respect to this base of degree minus one. D by dx one, because we have said minus one, d by dx two minus one, here one minus two, wait for it, three minus one, here is three, wait two minus four, c minus one, and here is minus one. People like it because it can be written in much form, very compact form. But I prefer another way, much more symmetric, here is. Uh, I replaced uh, here uh, x4, x3 by z, by z, and uh, x4 and a five, 5 by y1, a bit, a, bit, a bit nicer. So for me, this way is good, and the a is not so that, uh, that good. Uh, here I do not give definition what is good and what is good, so but I will explain later today that uh, why it's very convenient and very important for me to make this uh, choice. So now we have to deal in any uh, problem in Bonkare way with what we are here, it's a linearization operator. Uh, crucial role is uh, uh, raise this operator. So we all the time we consider, uh, we consider distribution as a pair of vector fields defined after multiplication by a by a matrix. The singular matrix is function uh, functional uh, entries corresponding to the change of uh, of wages. So this operator it brings a pair 
<coughs> which consists of a vector field and uh, a two by two matrix whose entries are uh, functions to uh, a pair of vector fields. So this is the Lie bracket. Uh, so we and and here is a column. N is a column N1 and 2. And here we multiply this column N1 and 2 by a matrix. And all the time we have degree. Uh, it has to put here I. We have degree of quasi homogeneity I. So it is final dimensional vector spaces. So a final dimensional vector space to uh, a final dimensional vector space. And what, uh, what is the meaning of this operator? I explained last time it is uh, so we take uh, the pseudo group infinite dimensional group of all local diffeomorphism and uh, all two by two non singular met uh, matrices with functional entries and if uh, x in the space of pairs of two vector fields uh, it acts and we apply it to our n and one n two so we have this action applied to n and we take uh, and we take uh, the linearization of this action at the identity of the pseudon linearization operator. <coughs> well, so what is the kernel of this operator NL? If we forget about this I, what is the kernel is uh, the algebra of infinitesimal symmetries of L, of the symbol of infinite approximation. And the image of this LN, if we forget about I, uh, can be treated as the tangent space to n to the symbol uh, to the orbit of n. So n is has an orbit is equivalent to infinite many distributions. So the image of ln can be treated as a tangent space to this uh, orbit. Okay. So now what we need. Uh, so here we have degree of quasi homogeneity i, but since n has degree of quasi homogeneity minus one, this pair of, the, of vector fields in the target space <coughs> is quasi homogeneity of degree i, uh, i minus one. And we have to take in this uh, all pairs of vector field of quasi degree i minus one, a complementary sp uh, subspace to the image of this, uh, of this operator. So what, that's what we need. There is always a complementary subspace, but uh, and now I am again, I'll pronounce the word good and the word bad. Uh, well, uh, uh, there are infinitely many choices for this guy, but uh, I will say that this complementary subspace is good. If we respect the group of quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetries of the symbol, it is a very important group. A group of symmetries, not integers, but symmetries, just symmetries <coughs> of, uh, of quasi homogeneous of degree zero. So, what is it? Okay, this is exponent uh, of this, uh, of the kernel of uh, LN restricted uh, to quasi homogeneous degree. Misha, yeah. my, my, my question. So your yes. N is a linear combination of N1 and N2? No, N is a, it's not a linear combination, it's a column, two vector fields, a pair of two vector fields, I express it as a column. Okay, it's just just, just basis of... of, so of for, for me, distribution is a, uh, uh, is a pair of two vector fields. Okay. Defined up to multiplication by a matrix, okay? So in particular, symbol is also a pair of vector fields, N1 and N2. Okay, okay, good, thanks. Okay. Some, uh... <coughs> well, so we have, uh, we have a quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetries, uh, symmetries of the uh, of the symbol and uh, and now it is precise definition what is complementary space when it's good and what is, when it's not good. Uh, is it is that important to find a good uh, complementary uh, subspace? Well, probably uh, one can manage without it, but then uh, I do not think that one can have any valuable results, uh, any valuable results. 
because it will be the things will become um, you know, construct uh, normal form, but it will be very involved uh, and it will be very difficult to use it. And what is important is that uh, what is good when it is good or when it is not good, it doesn't depend on the choice of this, uh, of this n. We have a choice of n if we because I express it as a vector field, as two vector field in coordinates. So we have a big choice, but uh, this definition, for this definition, uh, uh, it is irrelevant. So either good or not, uh, what is our choice of n doesn't make difference. Uh, but then uh, we have a question, do these com such complementary subspaces exist or not? In this problem, I will say we didn't that exist. I will show it uh, today. Uh, but we can ask this question in general for other geometric structures. And uh, uh, here, in most cases, uh, uh, in most cases, uh, and I know many cases of geometric structure, uh, such good complementary subspaces exist. But uh, I, uh, it was difficult for me to find a counterexample I did uh, for some not so usual geometric structure, but I do not know general theories about that. And I do not know how deep and interesting is this question about existence of good complementary subspaces and uh, is it possible, and maybe it can be reformulated in another language, I do not know. Uh, but in any how, if you want to just not to just to construct, but to use uh, a normal form, then uh, uh, the complementary subspaces uh, uh, should be good. But whether they are good or not, uh, so some general Poincare uh, uh, way, general claims in the Poincare way give us uh, uh, the following normal form. What we can do, we can express in suitable local coordinates any two three five distribution as a pair of vector fields as follows. So the part of degree minus one is n to vector fields. Uh, and uh, here, here V is also a pair of vector fields. V is V1, V2. N is L1, L2, and V is V1, V2. Uh, and here is uh, decomposition by degrees of quasi homogeneity starting from quasi homogeneity of degree zero. This is, we, we always have this form. So what we can do, so, a priori, Belaisha theorem says us that we have n plus something, but this starting from quasi homogeneity is zero, but this something can be brought to complementary subspaces of our choice. And whatever is our choice, good or bad of these complementary subspaces, a 2 c five distribution is correct, one of the definitions is equivalent to its link of information. If and only all, if all these guys are equal to zero, again. Okay, so uh, so this is the first thing, uh, very important. Well, the second thing is as follows. Uh, so assume that uh, our distribution is not flat, then this part starts with something. This degree quasi quasi homogeneity zero or one or two, and what, what can we say uh, about about this uh, something? Nowhere. Uh, let's return for a second to Riemannian matrix. In Riemannian matrix is very simple uh, thing because this uh, linearization operators have no kernel, no trivial kernel, and that's make uh, the classification problem of Riemannian matrix very uh, very simple. Uh, well, uh, well, but uh, for two three five distribution, it is not so. Uh, as you know, we have a nine dimensional isotropy. In any, in any case, as let's assume that our distribution is not correct, then this part starts with something. Let's assume that it start it starts uh, with degree, uh, with degree. Okay, so this means that uh, uh, our operator is subjective is onto uh, two degree or 
still it's uh, target space has a degree of homogeneity, uh, homogeneity k. Well, and now let's assume that this VK is good according to my definition above. And then modulo the action, then we have an action. Uh, then we have uh, an action uh, of quasi homogeneity uh, uh, degree zero symmetries of the symbol and it acts. Uh, it acts uh, on this space and modulo of this action, this VK, the first non zero guy, uh, some space is invariant. And I can say that it is, uh, I can call it as I wish, I will call it, I will call it the first invariant. Okay. Okay, so this is the approach. So, again, uh, let me repeat because this is important. So, general Poincare way gives us this normal form with complementary subspaces WI as we wish. Uh, distribution is flat, equivalent to I. Uh, so, uh, uh, if and only if there is no this part in the normal form. So this claims uh, our choice of complementary subspaces is irrelevant. But if we have a good choice so that this guys, or at least, uh, at least the first non-zero. Uh, so we can expect that for, uh, for i is equal, for example, phi is equal to zero, the image of the realization operator is, gives everything. Then W1, W0 is zero, and so on. Assume that W till W will be positive over nine is zero, and W, Gen is not zero. So it starts with uh, something of quasi homogeneity uh, degree 10. So what can we say about this? Is if our choice of W10 is good, if it respects the, uh, in, uh, the, the, the symmetries uh, of degree zero of, uh, of the symbol, so then modular this action, we have an invariant. And this is the first thing. Okay, so let, uh, let us now see what, uh, what we can expect uh, before doing any calculation. So this operator, since all uh, symbols are uh, isomorphic as a real algebra and decomorphic as a vector field, uh, we can expect that this operator has maximum possible rank of all i. It should be proved, of course, our I proved it, uh, but before proving, let us uh, see what can we uh, what can we expect. In this case, it is worth to solve very simple combinatoric exercises calculating the difference, I denoted the chi of the dimension of the target and the source uh, space of this operator. And uh, it is 10, 15 minutes, very simple combinatoric exercise. Uh, the number, the number of uh, uh, quasi homogeneous monomials of each degree. And here is the answer. Uh, so, uh, so this number, this difference is a negative uh, for degree of homogeneity, minimum of also minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, and one, two, three. And here is five, and then it grows rapidly. Uh, well, uh, and uh, uh, so this, uh, what, what does it mean? Uh, so what, uh, what do these uh, numbers uh, mean? Uh, the kernel, uh, the negative numbers, the, the, if the numbers are negative, I am very sorry if yeah, should this game should be, should be minus two, negative, not two, but minus two, minus two, minus one, minus four. So these numbers are negative, so this realization operator has a kernel. The kernel of these operators are integral symmetries. This i degree of homogeneity, these are integral symmetries of n of degree uh, i. Uh, so the symmetry algebra of the symbol can be decomposed uh, according to this combinatorial since this way, which you know very well, uh, very well from Tanaka. Uh, and dimensions of these guys are two, one, two, 
then it's zero or four, and again two, one, two. And since uh, the index is degree of quasi quasi homogeneity, uh, so we have uh, this relation. So the bracket of, well, of something quasi homogeneity of degrees pi and j gives you something quasi homogeneous of degree i plus j. Of course, it is g2, but so I, for example, got it without even knowing what is g2. Uh, so even without knowing g2, it, uh, this is how a simple combinatorics lead to the protein uh, dimensional algebra uh, g2. Let's go further and let's uh, now work with this number five, the first positive number in this combinatoric counting. Uh, well, so what can we say? Say that uh, we have normal form for quasi three z, uh, and uh, the complementary space, whatever, whatever is our choice of so complementary space, has the length to five. Okay, and now about about this choice about this concrete choice, about this complementary five-dimensional space. I want it to be good, according to the definitions that I said. Well, uh, and uh, 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 as I said, the choice of the symbol as a pair of rectitudes is irrelevant for the definition of good. But constructing of good, if exists, if exists, can be simple with good formulas, very short, nice formulas, and very involved. If I choose, and, and whether it is simple or involved, this is already not a conceptual question, but it's an important question for our work here. Uh, so whether construction of good uh, complementary space is simple and nice or involved depends on our choice of N. And that's why I, uh, I will choose uh, N, uh, namely in this way and not as most people like which corresponds to this monster you know and later we'll study symmetries and so on so i am based on the not, not precise frame but still claim that uh, when we are doing symmetries and we are all doing symmetries uh, uh, so then some objects that are involved in our work should be also symmetric and this uh, normal form for the symbol is symmetric this one is not Well, and so we can get uh, this good complementary space, W3, continuous 3, uh, almost automatically. It's very easy. It consists of this pair of vector fields, and uh, it is as follows. Uh, oh, I deleted the W. Uh, I'm sorry, I made some a bit of error here. I should be. Uh, what is here W? It's a vector field. And the same as an index, uh, but not. It's U. Uh, not W should be, but this U. It's my misprint. I am very sorry. Uh, I am very sorry for that. Uh, it should be U. The same vector field U as, as in the index. Uh, well, so this U, ah, here is it U. Yeah, U. Just replace this W by U. It's my mistake. Here is U instead of W. So what is that uh, degree of positive homogeneities of U? Minus, uh, minus two. Uh, right, we multiply it when we multiply it by X1 and uh, X2. <coughs> it will be minus uh, one. And here we have C, so F will be quasi homogeneous of degree four. So answer it is F. It is arbitrary <coughs> homogeneous degree uh, four polynomial of X1 and X2. This this choice of L. So if I choose L in this way, then I can choose a good first on zero W3 in this way. U instead of double. Well, and uh, 
So for this, uh, now, now, uh, now let me say what are the quasi, what are the quasi homogeneities degree zero symmetries of n of this n in these coordinates. So they are very nice. Uh, here they are. Uh, many people know this formula. Uh, somewhere it appears. So T is an arbitrary you know, single two by two matrices. Uh, and this quasi homogeneous degree zero symmetries are uh, not only quasi homogeneous of degree zero, they are automatically this my choice of n, they are linear. Is another choice of n, it wouldn't be so. It's also very convenient. And it is very convenient that how they act on this W3. This is our, our W3 in a very simple way. So we just uh, substitute, uh, replace x by tx. x is x1, x2, and that's it. So what I call the first invariant uh, over here, uh, what is it? Uh, it is uh, uh, an arbitrary homogeneous in usual cells degree uh, four polynomial defined after a nonlinear or singular change of the coordinates at x1 and uh, x2. And it is, uh, it is a time tensor at one point, at the origin. This is how Poincaré way gives us, well, what I missed is calculation, but calculations are very simple. No, let me be honest, it's a uh, few hours. Few hours you need this calculation, but they are very simple. Uh, well, uh, and we get Cartan and Valor. So Cartan tells us at one point, at zero. Uh, well, and so what is conceptually very good and important is that Cartan tensor at zero is a complete variant. We got it in the classification of quasi three gels of two, three, five distributions. So this is what Cartan tensor at zero is. Well, but we uh, need more. Uh, at least I, I I need more because uh, uh, well I would like to consider the case uh, all, all uh, so far. Later in the homogeneous case so on, but. Uh, today, uh, arbitrary case. So what I need is, uh, what I want to obtain good, not only W3, the first non zero from the matrix space, but W4, W5, and so on. Well, it requires more work, but not much more. If you use certain techniques like uh, GR in the product that I explained in my uh, first lecture. Uh, so what we did for three, uh, just to obtain Cartan tensor, can be generalized to this normal form, the same normal form. This is this are good WI. The same thing is F was a homogeneity of degree I plus one. So again, here is U plus V of quasi homogeneity two, uh, minus two times X1 and X2 minus one. So here should be I plus one. But but the problem is now for any i to say, uh, to specify the space where this f of quasi, uh, uh, quasi degree, uh, uh, quasi homogeneous of degree i plus y lives. Here it was very simple. It lives in the space of all uh, homogeneous degree four polynomials which depend only on x1, x2. And here, more involved, but it is doable and not that hard. Uh, what can be expected that it should belong to a certain ideal. And this ideal is as follows. Uh, it is generated by uh, monomials uh, x1 alpha x2 beta of degree, usual degree 4, then z times x1 alpha x beta homogeneity of degree 3, z squared uh, times uh, x1 alpha x2 beta homogeneous uh, v2, and also these functions x1 times x1 y2 minus x2 x1 x2 times the same function as this function squared, and this function plays crucial role for me. <coughs> it is very, very important. I will explain it later how it appears in a natural way. Okay, so this is 
uh, the normal form. I will repeat it again. So the normal form is uh, it serves for any 2 3 5 distributions without any restriction. Uh, so it is parameterized by a function of all five variables x1, x2, z, y1, y2, which belongs to the ideal generated by uh, these uh, functions. So, uh, and, uh, and that's it. So again, uh, so how, now how, how uh, even you, I will use this normal form to get many, many results. And probably other people can do it, uh, can use it to, I hope, to get more results. But anyhow, the first claim is the distribution is flat, only f in this normal form is identically zero. First thing, now, if it's not flat, then this f starts with some uh, degree for in positive homogeneous decomposition, uh, let it be m, and uh, then modular this action of GL2, T is a constant two by two, a non-single matrix, so modulus this transformation, this Fm is an invariant. In particular, if M is equal to four, if it is the minimum possible M, uh, then uh, I can call it, I can fix for myself in terminology, let me call it for a characteristic polynomial, uh, so this characteristic polynomial generalizes Cartan tensor. If M is equal to O, minimum possible, then it's exactly Cartan tensor, but again at one point at the origin. Okay, so this is the normal form, and now I will uh, <coughs> I will start uh, to see uh, how I can uh, I can use it. Uh, how I can use it. No, of course, I discuss this uh, normal form with uh, many people. Well, one of them was Robert Brandt, and uh, no, well, people in geometry, in differential geometry, uh, so they, uh, <laughs> they there is some philosophical people, I would say, philosophical, or somehow to call. The thing is that with this claim, how to check whether a given distribution is flat or not. Uh, no, okay, uh, so for Cartan has Cartan tensor at any point. So if a distribution is given in some analytic function, it's just like vector fields in terms of one point, some analytic function, then going through Cartan procedure, long and long Cartan procedure, you get also some functions and uh, Cartan tensor uh, is uh, parameterized by some functions, and you can check these functions as zero. In, in this way, it is not so. Uh, very, very so, so what I am doing, I am bringing uh, this normal form. So, okay, I can, the minimal number M is four. Okay, I see if F, F4 is not zero, distribution is not flat. But when, when it is zero, uh, I should see uh, F5 and to check if it's zero or not, and so on and so on. So, in such a way, uh, if the distribution is not flat, I will recognize it in a certain step. Let's forget for a moment about the fact that the number of calculations to get this uh, F2, uh, F4, F, F4 is easy, but F5, F6, and so on, it grows uh, exponentially in the number of calculations with the degree of, uh, of object homogeneity. Yeah. But if the distribution is really flat, I will never recognize it because I have no time. Uh, to make infinite number of steps, my life is unfortunately final. Misha, uh, so Misha, may I ask you a question? Yeah. In your expression for V1 and V2, is that correct there? Because if F is equal to zero, then V1 and V2 are just partial X1, partial X2, and that's not two, three, five. No, it's not correct. You are right, Benny. Thank you very much. It's again a misprint. It should be not the X1 and the X2, otherwise it would be terrible. It is my misprint. It should be N1 and N2. N1 and N2. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So Cartan has invariant, after basic invariant, fundamental invariant. After that, what he does? He differentiates this invariant in such covariant way in order to get new invariants, right? Uh, and defined not only at a point, defined uh, in a neighborhood, at all points. 
I do not need differentiate them because I already have all of them. They are here. This quasi homogeneous decomposition already give me invariance, but only at one point. But in, in order to construct it, not at one point, I have to do uh, big work. But now let me say something about uh, this big work and if it's really big, in fact, it's not big, by proving the main Cartan theorem from my normal form. Main Cartan theorem that the distribution is uh, flat, that in one, in one to one side it is equal. So if Cartan tensor is identically zero, then the distribution is flat. I will prove it using my normal form. Uh, in order to show that, uh, that it works. If you believe that it works for this proof, then you will believe that it works for many other things, including many new things. Uh, right, uh, but, uh, uh, well, and you know that this here, Car main Cartan theorem is not simple. It is not simple. Cartan proves it after he constructs this tensor. After that, the proof uh, takes one page. In Cartan's paper, but uh, constructing this paper, you know how many pages uh, it takes. So, anyhow, let me prove it using the normal form. I need to prove that in my normal form, this f is not zero because of, uh, uh, that, that it is zero. I did. That's what I need to prove. And I assume by the addition that not. Then it starts with some m. This m will have is five. Because it is given me that Cartan tensor vanishes everywhere, in particular at zero. So F, it starts with uh, degree of physical relativity at least, at least five. Okay, let me first prove that F5 is zero. What is F5? It belongs to my ideal. This is the form for, uh, for F5. These two guys are simply, in usual sense, homogeneous polynomials of x1, x2, or degree 5 and 3. So what I will do, I mean, of course, it's very difficult to compute Cartan tensor at an average point, as always, but I do not know, I do not need it. Let me, I will compute it at first at this point, epsilon for x1, 0 for all other coordinates. It is difficult to compute it, but it is very easy to compute it, and that's what we need, probably. And maybe it will be enough. Let's see. Uh, uh, so we know that when epsilon is zero, it is zero. So uh, up to all small of epsilon, just uh, uh, linear part with respect to epsilon. And it is very to see that the quasi three z of the distribution of this has up to one in my form, normal form. In this point, uh, it is my uh, my normal form uh, with. Uh, New, uh, new guy of quasi homogeneity degree four, and this new guy is simply the derivative of what I had with respect to x one, and this is very good. It looks very good, but let us see. So what I need in my normal form, this all these guys in my normal form belongs to this idea. This guy f five belongs to my idea. But when we differentiate it by x1, this guy, if it also belongs to my ideal, then for m is equal to 5, I am done. Because I can then, then I can uh, say that it is 0, this derivative is 0, taking similarly this point, I can the derivative with respect to x2 is 0, and then f5 is 0, that's what I need from the addiction. But the life is more complicated. It's not true that this guy belongs to my ideal because uh, it has two parts. When we differentiate this part by x1, we obtain a homogeneous degree of polynomial. It is in the ideal, it's good. But when we differentiate this part, the other part, we obtain z times homogeneous degree two polynomials. Polynomial, and it is not in my idea. Once again, my idea. It is. So you see, z times x1 cubed, or z times 
x1, x2 squared is not in the ideal. Well, Just a second, something is, maybe I did something wrong, but, ah, okay. Yeah. Well, so what to do? What to do is that I'll do the following. So how I how I bring uh, our my function of positive relativity of degree four to this ideal. Uh, so I know that it can be brought by, uh, by to some ideal. So I know what does it mean modular ideal. And I know it will be very simple for uh, for of degree four uh, to say uh, all the claim, all possible claims about equivalence uh, of monomials for the commodity of degree four model of this ideal. So what appears is this monomial. My claim is it is zero model of the ideal, so it is irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Is it good or not? It is both, both good and not. Well, why is, why is good? Because when we, uh, because this guy now is simply this derivatives, these two derivatives, and we can, the same argument now with this claim, we can say that uh, if Cartan tensor vanishes uh, at this point, at similar point with epsilon points two, then there is no this part. But, what is not bad, bad side, uh, the other side of the metal is that we, this argument doesn't give us any information about this homogeneous degree three polynomial. It doesn't come out in this way. But why it doesn't come out? Because our, this argument was too simple. I took these points, just these two points. Because for them, computation is immediate, but but uh, Cartan uh, when it's our assumption when it is identically, not only at these uh, two points. And we have two ways now for approach, either to work with other points, that's what I will do, or what is also doable, but more involved, much more involved, is to work not only modular or, or small of epsilon, but modular or small of epsilon squared, uh, to work with also the epsilon squared. Well, I will do the first way. I will take other points, and it is natural which points to take. Uh, is this D2, the symmetry algebra of N of the symbol? Uh, I will use uh, its two dimensional part of positive degree minus one. Uh, and I will move the origin to another two points, not these points, uh, another two points by F sometimes cross of the vector fields which span this minus one part of uh, Z2. And I calculated, it's not hard, uh, that uh, uh, at these points, uh, I have, uh, at one of these points, in, uh, uh, at least I don't need a second. So if I know that uh, I have this, and I already have this, if I find then what comes out uh, at this point is this guy, and at this guy, is in the ideal, and therefore, this degree, the normal also vanishes as we give one. And it is a proof of up to details uh, for m is equal to five. For m is equal to six and seven, the proof is similar and even a bit easier. And uh, for m starting from eight, uh, all m can be, as of eight can be combined in one proof, the same approach, the same ideas, and uh, not harder. With, with all details, operational details, the proof takes five, five to six pages of this fundamental Cartan theorem. Now let me give, uh, let me say at a long time, I just uh, uh, that this normal form and a bit of calculational work leads to what I called in my first lecture the base theorem, 
that uh, we discussed it with Boria earlier today in this case with discussion uh, that uh, if the distributive power distribution is not flat, uh, so, uh, so then uh, there are no internal symmetries with zero in the Jajatropy part. Symmetries which vanish uh, at the origin, and then there are no symmetries which have zero linear approximation. It also follows from this constructed normal form uh, and some work which shows that certain three operators, just three uh, complete operators, uh, that uh, they have trivial canon as can be expected. Well, uh, it is some work because these operators are parameterized by, uh, by this function, this idea in my normal form. So I have to work with this idea, uh, but it is just qualified calculations, I, I would say, not more than that. And it's, and it's uh, uh, to classification of all these atrophies about it, as they all can be linearized, it is a part of the general theory I have, but for this case, the result is as well. So, so we have, uh, so take any two by two matrix, T single or not, and define a linear vector field. The coordinates x1, x2, z, y1, of 2 uh, vector field. Uh, so here, it's again a tip of here. x is x1, x2. Uh, x is x1, x2. y is y1, of y2, without the partial derivative. So if you achieve us, but you understand it, uh, so what is written here, so it is just linear uh, vector field and using it, the normal form and with this base here, which itself follows from the normal form, here is complete classification of, uh, uh, of isotropics about, of all possible isotropics about it, of uh, A, of any without any restriction two three five distributions and not only as abstractly algebras but also with respect to uh the uh, so the isotropic subalgebras uh, up to uh, a deeper one is a misfortune well. so it can be one dimensional of course and within that dimensional uh, there are several cases as it is spun by uh, Vt with a single matrix T. So this matrix T is either uh, any fixed traceless matrix or it is a matrix of this form with integers Q and P. Q is bigger than P. Uh, so it is the first possibility of this one dimensional uh, algebra, uh, as it talks about. Uh, well, uh, the second case is a two-dimensional non-abelian algebra. In this case, uh, we always have this with respect to only one case. Uh, everything is with respect to uh, details. And the third case is SL2, which is uh, the algebra spanned by three vector fields. These three vector fields, this T, T1, T2, T3, any basis uh, on of SNC. So this is a theory without any restriction. Of course, we have some, uh, some information about our distribution, and then not only, not all, all the cases are realizable. For example, if Cartan tensor does not assume that Cartan tensor does not vanish at zero, and do, do the same anything else. Just at one point at zero, assume that Cartan tensor does not uh, does not vanish. Then the realizable cases, and it also immediate, uh, follows from what uh, from the normal form uh, as follows. So it is this case is realizable. Case two, case three is not realizable, of course. It's not realizable, and case one. Uh, is realizable with uh, a single matrix T, one of this, one of these three matrices. So some people know, I think, uh, that uh, if Cartan tensor has uh, one root, so for me it is polynomial, uh, 
x1 to the 4. Uh, so then, uh, then there are two possibilities, either this possibility or this possibility related very much with what Borja Dubrov discovered that I explained uh, in the next uh, lecture. These two possibility response to Cartan. No, if Cartan tells that it has four roots, then either we have case two, seven dimensional symmetry algebra, or we have this one, this one case, which is for not homogeneous institution that it is realizable in the signal. From what I said, and the fact that it is realizable for homogeneous distribution, it is what Borja Dubrov uh, discovered. And these two one-dimensional cases uh, correspond to, uh, to one of several uh, Cartan uh, tensors, uh, namely x1 squared, x2 squared, this plus or minus over r, two cases, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and pl plus and plus minus uh, x1 squared plus x2 plus minus x2 squared, any combination of signs. Uh, well, no, well, about that, uh, probably next time. So I prepare the slides so that uh, one hour to finish in one hour as I did. Let me say uh, orally that, of course. Uh, uh, this procedure of uh, 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 obtaining Cartan tensor at a point that I, of course, have a problem. I don't know if you asked about, about that. Uh, this procedure is easily can be given a problem with mathematical. Well, at one point, it gives you Cartan tensor immediately in a quarter of a second or less. Uh, well, but of course, uh, what I can do, uh, I can uh, <laughs> ask Mathematica to do for me a big job. I can ask it to compute the time tensor, not at that point, at, 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 at point P, at point P, uh, these coordinates, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, without specifying P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Mathematica works very well with C. So Mathematica has to, a priori, uh, the solution is given by vector field uh, and so on, and, uh, but then uh, so Mathematica works with this T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and it gives, uh, it gives you Cartan tensor at any point, not only at zero. Uh, well, but uh, uh, but uh, for that it uh, might be not a quarter of a second, it might, might be uh, more and, uh, and much more. For example, it was one of our motivation to write a good program and so on. We, we discussed this puzzle. Uh, one of uh, puzzle has a lot of activities. One of them is, to, is hunting for good snakes, uh, more exactly for good parameters for his what he calls snakes. So some people heard about, about that. So snakes is some dramatic structure. And it has some physical parameters, natural physical parameters. So Pavel would like is hunting for para parameters corresponding to flat uh, distributions. Oh well, that's why I also discussed it. I, I, I was uh, <laughs> trying to help him to hunt with that, uh, uh, but it is it is difficult. At one point, uh, it, it gives you results. If the distribution is symmetric or has some symmetries, uh, it works good. On the other hand, for any left invariant distribution, I have another algorithm because this approach, which I see a bit more uh, next time. So, this approach for any, uh, if you have a left invariant distribution, I explained it last, last time, induced by a, and what I call a low five dimensional real algebra, which is, <coughs> can be expressed as a three by five matrices, numeric of these numbers. Uh, so, let me go to the very uh, beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah, so here is a dog argument from algebra, if you remember. Uh, and we have its characteristic uh, uh, matrix. Uh, three or five, so we have 15 numbers. And these 15 uh, numbers, not all 15 numbers are realizable, okay. About <coughs> well, that will speak. Uh, well, but uh, anyhow, we, we have it. Uh, for some fundamental algebra. And then uh, it induces uh, your distribution and you are interested to find its uh, uh, symmetries, uh, which might be the same as the initial algebra and much more, and much, might be more. And so for that, uh, uh, my approach implies a formula, an algorithm. I will give you a formula, a formula. For any of these numbers, I will give you a formula for part time tensor. No, of course, uh, it was one of the main questions is to see whether, whether it's flat or not. Might be flat if this characteristic matrix is not zero. Maybe. Well, I can give you a formula. I am not sure that any of you saw a formula for Cartan tensor, for, for example, for letter variable. I have a general formula, but I do not need it. Uh, because mathematics does it for me. But I, uh, if you're interested, I can show you next time. But be ready that it takes not uh, this formula is. Uh, polynomial of degree four of 15 variables, and I'm not sure, probably two slides will be enough for this formula, uh, 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 But anyhow, it is very, it is a big formula, and for that, and then of course, it is not a quarter of second, uh, it is just a uh, moment. Uh, and, uh, also, this approach with some techniques leads uh, to the fact uh, that uh, this Cartan tensor x1 cube x2 uh, is uh, what Dennis spoke a lot about this difficult uh, theorem is that uh, for homogeneous distribution uh, Cartan tensor uh, x1 cube x2 uh, with one uh, with two roots and one of them of the bc3 uh, so it is realizable because uh, constant of tensor everywhere, which was a new thing, uh, thanks to Dennis, but, uh, but for a difficult statement uh, that it is not realizable, uh, that it is not realizable for uh, homogeneous distribution, that I also can prove uh, using this uh, normal form. But, uh, but unfortunately, as you see, I do not have time uh, well, to prove everything. And so, uh, in fact, uh, what I will do next time, uh, well, probably I have to postpone uh, uh, this very interesting case of 3 5 distributions, which are not reduced to 2 5 distribution. And about this uh, last result that I got about this SL3 in G2 as a maximum symmetry algebra for 3 5 distributions, which uh, are not uh, 2 3 5. Mm -hmm. Just a small question. Um, can I just clarify uh, sim zero? We were just discussing it here. So, I mean, is is that GL two or wh or which part of it is GL two? The sim zero what? Sim zero n that you wrote. Yes. What's, what's the relation of that to GL two? Relation between GL two and the ideal? No, uh, because you wrote sim the, the sim zero n. I think that you had on that. Ah, yeah, because it's homogeneous. Yeah, for my uh, for my choice of n in local coordinates. Uh, here is it. It was page twenty nine. Page twenty nine. So sim zero Sorry. is like g zero. It's so this is this is in the infinitesimal level uh, and uh, infinite symmetries. Uh, of degree zero and not invisible. Right here, here. This one, I mean. Oh, T is G. Okay, sorry. Um, ah? Okay. No, can, can, can you go one slide back? 29. Yeah. I uh, know. No, yeah, this one, 28. Sorry. Yeah. This one. 28. No, no, 28. 28 it was. 28. Yep. No. No. 25. <laughs> no. No. This one? No. No, there was X. There was X. The question uh, rather than the number of the slide, and I will find uh, the place. 
So what, what is the equation? The what? equation is that that sim zero was formed by uh, a leap part and matrix part, right? And was x of L and H. Uh, so, so what are these components? So again, which, which operator? L and zero. Can, can you go slowly back in slides? Slowly not, back. Not, not the operator, it, it was a group that acts that you want in variance of your yeah, your comp the group. complement. What is this, this group? Is, okay. back, 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 Misha. Back, back, one more. Yeah, you're yeah. speaking oh, yeah. about this group. Yes. Right. So what is Z0? What is H0? OK, uh, so uh, distribution is a pair of vector fields defined up to multiplication by a function, no singular function with functional end. Okay, so uh, so this means so H is a two by two matrix whose entries are functions. Symmetry is not important, but but in this approach uh, we have to write it because symmetry is not only integral symmetry is not only a vector field, but it is a pair <coughs> which consists of a vector field and an arbitrary two by two matrix with functional entries. Well, uh, not infernal, but true symmetry is a pair which consists of a local diffeomorphism or a change of coordinates, if you wish, and uh, two by two matrix, non singular two by two matrix, is functional entries which corresponds to the change of the bits. Mm -hmm. but, but H0 has to be of weight zero. Does that mean that it's constant? Right, it's constant, of course. Okay, so this is GL2, right? Hmm? So then it is GL2. Oh. Of course. But Z0 is also GL2, right? Huh? Z0 is also GL2. No, all together, this is GL2, all together. But what means all together? How do you split GL2? We can define the Lie bracket of pairs. It's, uh, it is defined by the Lie brackets of vector fields, the Lie brackets of pairs. It's not that important. So consider this as an object. Uh, it is a final dimensional vector space. This, this space is a final dimensional vector space. The, yes, H is a constant matrix and, uh, uh, and this is homogeneous degree zero, but it is defined by this constant matrix H. So this is, this is GL2. This is GL2. This is a, some realization of GL2. The, uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, is that uh, everything here is a matrix and a vector field. And how they look, uh, this guy and this guy, how they look, it depends on the coordinate choice of this N. Uh, so for my choice of N, they look good enough. Uh, uh, here it is. No, but I, I mean, I, I don't think that this construction has to be really depend on a choice of court i mean i'm i'm not sure on, on what i mean i mean i after all I, I don't i don't think that this construction should depend really depend on a choice of of a basis i mean if you can do it in one basis then you it then you can do it in any other basis on input and approximation this n you mean nil, you mean nil basis for nil potent approximation if you can do it for one nil, uh, basis for nil potent approximation no for, for basis it? if we fix n as a pair of two vector fields n1 and then two and then if you replace n1 and then two by n1 plus n2 and then one minus n2 it is the same thing right Yes, but, but if it is, uh, but if you, uh, but if, for example, you are uh, taking this end, yes, what here, you, here, still, you still you probably like. can, I mean, cannot you do the, maybe it will look more complicated, but after much all, more complicated, but this after all, it's look, possible to do, no, I said it, it's the equivalent. I said it's equivalent. It. <coughs> if there is a good. Complementary space. I wrote it in the slides. If there are good complementary space for uh, in, in any problem for one symbol, then uh, then it will be good it, for uh, the other. Uh, whether whether uh, if the complementary space is good or not, it, it it does not depend on the choice of 
uh, right. of symbol, on realization of symbol by vector field. Yes, we yes, fix yes, uh, yes. symbol uh, as an abstract uh, algebra, we fix symbol, and then it is well defined what it, does it mean that we have, we, have, we have a good complementary space. It does not depend on the realization of this or that of the right. symbol by vector fields. But if a complement, good complementary space exists, then how they look? And it's also, it is not conceptual. You mean the, form, the formula will look more, much more complicated? Much more complicated. Just think that this vector field will be not, uh, will be not here, here they are linear. It's linear transformation. Mm -hmm. It will be not be linear. Mm -hmm. This quasi continuous part of degree zero. They will be not linear. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's first thing, and all other things will be okay. It will, it, it can, it can be done, but it will be not convenient. Well, uh, everything depends on what you want to get. Uh, so maybe, maybe somehow no, the problem. I mean, if how we, like uh, in, in maybe other situations, uh, I mean, if you go uh, out of two, three, five, then like you have much more choices, and then like how you. What choice is good and what choice is uh, bad? It all depend on 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 your actually ex, ex computational skills, right? <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, this is very good what you what you said. So since yeah. you say, said this, uh, I should say yeah. two things. First, I completely agree. I okay. said that uh, I said in the beginning of the talk that sometimes good. And bad it will be a precise mathematical definition, and sometimes uh, good and bad means convenient for me. Now, let us fix it. That this is convenient for me, because out of that I can get results. Not the results and use them. Yes, and and, and a priori I I came to it after some experience. That's also true. Yes, it is personal. It is not uh, objective. It's subjective. Mm. But I should add that the, your claim concerns any mathematical research, including research of Karpan. He also use, is, is using his uh, intuition when he constructs his tensor. Okay, it's nowadays people are giving mini courses about that right. and uh, finding more and more methodology in Cartan's approach. But it is, for me, it is clear that Cartan also uses a lot of his intuition and how he got Cartan tensor. Well, he got it as a sequence of preliminary, preliminary normal forms, in general way. <coughs> so something to do with the basis he works with one form, uh, some relations, then to see what results these relations, and at the end of the day, he comes to Cartan tensor. What is what 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 intermediate sequence to, for this to choose? Uh, this or that? Uh, it is absolutely not clear. clear. The final result will be the same. And uh, uh, but uh, okay. uh, but the way of uh, how we get it. Uh, because we, with not convenient choice, we have no patience to come to the end at all. That's how I can say. Yes, like uh, nowadays, so we, we have the Tanaka series and parabolic geometries where give you, like there is a normal choice of, of this complement anyway. Okay, this is a good comment. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, uh, of course, this is related very much uh, this number, this combinatorics. Uh, uh, this is what you know. Uh, what you know from uh, from Tanaka. But I would like to see uh, so how mm -hmm. not for two three five distributions, how for other problems, for example, for yes. okay. two three six distributions, for so three six distributions where we have Brian paper. Uh, how well this Tanaka prolongation? Okay, it gives you. Uh, it gives you the symmetry algebra of F of the symbol. It gives you much more, but within what we discussed, it gives you uh, symmetry algebra of the symbol. Uh, well, and uh, does it give you something like a tensor? 
Даже в Give Brian Tensor Transmission здесь не нет. Yes, of course. Huh? The theory gives all, it's like harmonic, I mean, it's what Dennis described, harmonic curvatures. Like the, it's not only Cartan, I mean, the construction of Cartan connection, and then like you have this theory of harmonic curvature. Anyway. Yes. No, yeah. Uh, okay, this is what uh, I, uh, you know well, but... Uh, uh, I don't know, many people know, I do not know, uh, I do not know this well, maybe one day I will learn, I will learn it, uh, well, uh, but, uh, uh, but here the principle difference is that everything is realized by concrete, uh, by, by concrete vector fields, in local coordinates, okay. uh, in local, uh, in local coordinates, uh, well, uh, so, should I even understand, uh, uh, understand your comment uh, in such a way uh, that... Uh, no, I, I mean, it's, it's an, an, another method, another tool, uh, which is useful. You, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you, you should not understand it as... No, no, I should. I should okay. uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you, what this piece is here I wrote. So I don't know how deep or interesting this question about uh, about existence of complementary uh, of good what I call good complementary space. So does does your comment somehow has relation with this? What is it with here? Yeah, that uh, like uh, is, this is a big question, right? I mean existence of this complementary there is no general theory apart apart of parabolic key apart of parabolic key there is no general theory mm -hmm. <coughs> okay yeah. mm -hmm. any uh, other questions uh, yeah sure I, I was just asking if someone wants ah, you are asking questions yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah if someone wants to ask uh, I have another like uh, it's not real like about the three five so three five distribution so you consider the case when this uh, two rank two sub distribution is involutive at every point. no I mean, this is primitive this is uh, uh, kindergarten case uh, yes within three five distribution there is only there is one case with infinite dimensional symmetry algebra one and only one case. Uh, it is extremely simple case, uh, trivial case, and uh, forget about ah, so, this case. So forget it's, about it's, this case. Uh, but the next you, case, so uh, yes. beyond this case, uh, uh, the symmetry algebra cannot be bigger than uh, Z2. Uh, cannot be bigger than Z2. So it's either infinite dimensional, the simple, very simple case, or, uh, or Z2. Uh, mm. But uh, uh, ah, so you have or, some singular, singular set. Yes, like but so ah, I see. Uh, now uh, beyond this trivial case, the difference the difference with two three five distribution is as follows. We can always take a square root of a three five distribution. Yes. To get two five distribution, but it is not necessarily two three five. Mm -hmm. It might have uh, a big zoo of gross vectors. But uh, it will be not homogeneous. Homogeneous. So the interesting case I'm going to discuss when SL3 maximum appears uh, is a case uh, uh, where the growth vector, uh, where the, it is general thing that uh, the set of singular points where the square root is not 2, 3, 5 is a hyper surface. Uh, but it might happen that at any point of this cipher surface, the growth vector is uh, 2. Two, 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 up to infinity. It doesn't grow at all from two. And, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, beyond this hypersurface, uh, it is uh, two, three, five. Ah, is and all this hypersurface is related to, and this gives you a certain. Ah, I see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>